The curse of the pharaohs is a mysterious phenomenon that has fascinated and terrified people for centuries. But before we begin, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in curses? Some people do, and some people don't. Some people think that curses are just superstitions, or coincidences, or psychological effects. Others believe that curses are real, and that they have supernatural or paranormal causes. What do you think? Share your thoughts with me in the comments. Anyway, regardless of what you believe, there is no denying that the curse of the pharaohs is one of the most intriguing and controversial topics in the history of ancient Egypt. It is said that anyone who disturbs the tomb of an ancient Egyptian ruler, especially a pharaoh, will suffer from bad luck, illness, or death. This curse is supposed to protect the eternal rest of the pharaoh and his treasures from grave robbers and intruders. But where did this legend come from? Is there any evidence for it? And what are some of the most famous cases of the curse of the pharaohs? I'll try to answer these questions and more as I take you on a journey through the ancient and modern mysteries of the curse of the pharaohs. Let's start from the beginning. The ancient Egyptians believed in the afterlife and they spent a lot of time and resources to prepare for it. They built elaborate tombs, filled them with precious objects and performed complex rituals to ensure the safe passage of the soul to the realm of the gods. They also wrote spells and curses on the walls of the tombs or on the coffins to ward off any potential enemies or intruders. The tombs and the mummies were protected by various means, such as hidden passages, traps, guards, and priests. But the most powerful protection was the magic of the words. The ancient Egyptians believed that words had the power to create or destroy reality, and they used them to invoke blessings or curses. They inscribed spells and prayers on the walls of the tombs, on the coffins, and even on the mummies themselves. Some of these spells were meant to help the pharaohs in their afterlife, but some of them were meant to deter and punish anyone who would dare to violate their eternal rest. These are some examples of the curses that were found in some of the tombs. As for all men who shall enter this my tomb, impure, there will be judgment. An end shall be made for him, I shall seize his neck like a bird. I shall cast the fear of myself into him. Cursed be those who disturb the rest of a pharaoh. They that shall break the seal of this tomb shall meet death by a disease that no doctor can diagnose. Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. These curses were not meant to be empty threats. They were believed to be real and effective and they were backed by the power of the gods. The ancient Egyptians believed that the gods would punish anyone who offended them or their chosen representatives, the pharaohs. The gods could inflict all kinds of calamities, such as plagues, famines, wars, accidents, and natural disasters on the offenders and their descendants. These curses were not very common, and they were mostly directed at the priests or the workers who were in charge of maintaining the tombs. They were meant to ensure that the tombs were kept clean, intact, and ritually pure. They were not intended to harm anyone who was respectful or curious about the ancient culture. However, things changed when the ancient Egyptian civilization declined and collapsed. The tombs became forgotten, neglected, and vulnerable to looting and vandalism. Many of them were robbed, damaged, or destroyed by invaders, treasure hunters, or local people. The ancient curses were ignored, misunderstood, or taken as a challenge. This is where the legend of the curse of the pharaohs began to emerge. The first recorded accounts of the curse date back to the 19th century, when European explorers and archaeologists started to rediscover and excavate the ancient tombs. They were fascinated by the rich and mysterious culture of the ancient Egyptians, and they wanted to learn more about it. But they also wanted to collect and display the artifacts and the mummies that they found. Often, they did not respect the original context or the religious significance of the tombs and sometimes damaged or desecrated the tombs or even unwrapped the mummies, exposing them to the air and the light. Some of these explorers and archaeologists reported experiencing strange and unfortunate events after their expeditions. They claimed that they were cursed by the angry spirits of the pharaohs who were seeking revenge for the violation of their tombs. They reported having nightmares, accidents, 
illnesses, or even deaths, either affecting themselves, their family members, or colleagues. They also reported seeing apparitions, hearing voices, or feeling a presence in their homes or museums. These stories spread quickly, and they captured the imagination of the public. They also inspired many writers and filmmakers who created fictional works based on the curse of the pharaohs. Some of these works are very famous, such as The Mummy, a horror film franchise that started in 1932, or The Jewel of Seven Stars, a novel by Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula. But the most famous and influential case of the curse of the pharaohs is undoubtedly the one that involved the tomb of Tutankhamun, the boy king who ruled Egypt in the 14th century BC. His tomb was discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, and Lord Carnarvon, his patron and financier. It was one of the most sensational discoveries in the history of archaeology, as the tomb, hidden in the Valley of the Kings, a desert necropolis where many pharaohs were buried, was almost intact and full of priceless treasures. It was also one of the most controversial discoveries, as it sparked a series of rumors and speculations about the curse of the pharaohs. Carter and his team were amazed by what they saw inside the tomb. There were thousands of artifacts, such as statues, jewelry, furniture, weapons, and chariots. There were also paintings and inscriptions that revealed details about the life and death of Tutankhamun. And of course, there was the golden sarcophagus that contained the mummy of the young king, wrapped in linen and adorned with a magnificent mask. The discovery of the tomb was a sensation that captured the imagination of the world. People were fascinated by the ancient culture and the mysterious fate of Tutankhamun, who died at the age of 19 under unclear circumstances. Some speculated that he was murdered, others that he was a victim of a genetic disorder or an infection. According to some sources, Carter and Carnarvon found a clay tablet in the antechamber of the tomb with the following inscription, Death will slay with his wings whoever disturbs the peace of the pharaoh. However, this tablet was never photographed or documented, and it may have been a hoax or a fabrication. What is certain, however, is that Lord Carnarvon died shortly after the opening of the tomb, in April 1923. He was bitten by a mosquito on his cheek, and he accidentally cut the bite while shaving. The wound became infected, and he developed blood poisoning and pneumonia. Carnarvon died in a Cairo hotel at the age of 56. Some people attributed his death to the curse of the pharaoh, and they pointed out some eerie coincidences. They claimed that at the exact moment of his death, the lights in Cairo went out and his dog in England howled and dropped dead. They also claimed that when Carter examined the mummy of Tutankhamun, he found a similar wound on the cheek, as if the pharaoh had inflicted the same injury on his violator. The second victim was George J. Gould, an American millionaire who visited the tomb shortly after its opening. He was fascinated by the sight and stayed for several hours. He also took a picture of himself with the mummy of Tutankhamun. A few months later, he died from a fever in the French Riviera. Some said that his death was a result of the curse and that his picture with the mummy showed a ghostly hand reaching out to him. The third victim was Prince Ali Kamel Fahmy Bey, an Egyptian aristocrat who was married to a French woman named Marguerite Alaba. He was a friend of Carter and Carnarvon, and had visited the tomb several times. He also had a collection of Egyptian artifacts, some of which came from the tomb. In 1923, he was shot and killed by his wife in a London hotel, after she discovered that he was having an affair. Some said that his death was a result of the curse, and that his wife was possessed by the spirit of Tutankhamun's wife, who was jealous of his infidelity. The list of victims continued to grow, as more people who had some connection to the tomb died in various ways, such as accidents, suicides, murders, or diseases. Some of the most notable cases were Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, the radiologist who x-rayed Tutankhamun's mummy. He died from a mysterious illness in 1924. Arthur Cruttenden Mace, a curator of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and a member of Carter's team who helped to open the sarcophagus. He became so sick he had to leave the site in 1924 finally dying from pneumonia in 1928. A subsequent autopsy discovered the cause of death to be arsenic poisoning. It is unclear how arsenic managed to get into his system. 
Captain Richard Bethel, Carter's secretary and assistant. He died from suffocation in his bed in 1930 after burning some papers related to the tomb. Lord Westbury, the father of Captain Richard Bethel, he committed suicide by jumping from his seventh floor apartment in 1930 after receiving several threatening letters about the curse. And of course, Howard Carter, the leader of the expedition and discoverer of the tomb. He died from lymphoma in 1939 after spending years studying and cataloguing the contents of the tomb. By the time of Carter's death, more than 20 people who had been involved in the discovery or the opening of the tomb had died, some of them in unusual or violent ways. The legend of the curse of the pharaohs had become a global phenomenon, inspiring books, movies, and documentaries. Many people believed that there was something supernatural or paranormal behind the deaths, and that the ancient Egyptians had some secret knowledge or power that could harm the modern world. These claims were not supported by any evidence, and they were dismissed by most experts and historians. They argued that Carnarvon's death was caused by natural and medical factors, and that the coincidences were exaggerated or fabricated. They also pointed out that Carter and many other people who were involved in the discovery of the tomb lived long and healthy lives, without any signs of the curse. But the public was not convinced, and they continued to believe in the curse of the pharaohs. They were fascinated by the mystery and the drama of the story, and they wanted to believe that there was something supernatural and powerful behind it. They also wanted to believe that the ancient Egyptians had some secret knowledge or magic that could defy modern science and technology. Let's start with the supernatural or paranormal explanations. These are the ones that suggest that the curse is caused by the angry spirits of the pharaohs or by some ancient magic or power that the Egyptians possessed. These explanations are based on the belief that there is something beyond the physical world, something that we cannot see or measure, but that can affect us in mysterious ways. They are often supported by personal experiences, anecdotes, or testimonies of people who claim to have witnessed or experienced the curse, and are also influenced by the cultural and religious background of the people who believe in them. For example, some people who believe in the supernatural or paranormal explanations of the curse of the pharaohs may also believe in other phenomena, such as ghosts, demons, angels, or miracles. They may also believe in the concept of karma, or the law of cause and effect, which states that every action has a consequence, and that every wrong deed will be punished, sooner or later. They may also believe in the concept of fate, or destiny, which states that everything that happens is predetermined, and that we cannot escape our fate, no matter what we do. These beliefs may influence how people interpret the events that are associated with the curse of the pharaohs, they may see them as signs, warnings, or messages from the beyond, or from the divine. These people may also see them as lessons, tests, or challenges that they have to face and overcome. These are just some of the possible supernatural or paranormal explanations of the curse of the pharaohs, and some of the possible effects that they may have on the people who believe in them. Of course, these are not the only ones, and there may be other variations or combinations of them, but they are some of the most common and popular ones, and they are often the ones that are portrayed in the media and in fiction. But what about the natural or psychological explanations? These are the ones that suggest that the curse is not caused by anything supernatural or paranormal, but by something that can be explained by science or logic. These explanations are based on the belief that there is nothing beyond the physical world, nothing that we cannot see or measure, and nothing that can affect us in mysterious ways. They are often supported by evidence, facts, or statistics that show that the events that are associated with the curse of the pharaohs are not unusual, extraordinary, or related. These explanations are also influenced by the scientific and rational background of the people who believe in them. For example, some people who believe in the natural or psychological explanations of the curse of the pharaohs may also believe in things such as evolution, genetics, or neuroscience. They may also adhere to the concept of probability, or chance, which states that every event has a certain likelihood of occurring, 
and that some events are more likely than others, but none are impossible. They may also believe in coincidence, or correlation, which states that some events may occur at the same time, in the same place, or in the same sequence, but without any causal connection or meaning. These are some of the possible natural or psychological explanations of the curse of the pharaohs, and some of the possible effects that they may have on the people who believe in them. Of course, these are not the only ones, and there may be other variations or combinations of them, but they are some of the most common and realistic ones, and they are often the ones that are accepted by the experts and the historians. The curse of the pharaohs is not limited to the tomb of Tutankhamun or to the 19th and 20th centuries. There have been many other cases of people who claim to have experienced the curse after disturbing or studying the remains of ancient Egyptian rulers or their artifacts. Some of these cases are very recent and they may surprise you. For example, in 2020, a group of researchers used ground-penetrating radar and other non-invasive techniques to scan King Tutankhamun's tomb and found no evidence of hidden chambers or curses. However, shortly after their announcement, the world was hit by a certain global pandemic, which some people saw as a sign of the pharaoh's wrath. They argued that the researchers had violated the sanctity of the tomb and that the virus was a punishment for their intrusion. They also pointed out that the pandemic started in China, where some of the artifacts from the tomb were on display at the time. Of course, there is no scientific or logical connection between the scan of the tomb and the outbreak of the virus. The timing was just a coincidence. But some people preferred to believe in the curse and even created a hashtag on social media, hashtag Tutankhamun curse. Another recent case of the curse of the pharaohs is related to the Grand Egyptian Museum, a new and massive museum that has been built near the pyramids of Giza and that is expected to have an official opening in 2024. The museum will house more than 100,000 artifacts, including the entire collection of Tutankhamun, and will be the largest museum in the world dedicated to a single civilization. However, the construction and the opening of the museum have faced many delays and difficulties, which some people attributed to the curse of the pharaohs. They claimed that the museum was disturbing the ancient spirits and that they were causing accidents, fires, floods, and other problems. They also claimed that the museum was cursed by the mummy of Ankeperure Smenkare, a mysterious pharaoh who may have been Tutankhamun's brother or successor and whose tomb has never been found. It was said that the museum had a replica of his sarcophagus and that it was attracting his wrath. Again, there is no evidence or reason to believe that the museum is cursed, and the delays and difficulties are more likely to be caused by practical and political factors, such as the budget, security, logistics, and the pandemic. But some people preferred to believe in the curse and even created a petition to stop the opening of the museum. These are just two such examples of the recent and interesting cases of the curse of the pharaohs, but there are many more. However, they all show that the legend of the curse of the pharaohs is still alive and popular, and that it still has an impact on the people who are interested or involved in the ancient Egyptian culture. So, what do you believe? If you traveled to Egypt and discovered a sealed pharaoh's tomb, would you dare enter? I know I'd have to think twice. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed or learned anything about what you've just seen, then please like us and hit that subscribe button. We're just getting started, so you'd be doing us a huge favor. It really helps out a small channel like this one. I hope we earned your subscription today, but if we didn't, I promise we'll keep making great videos until we do. Join us next time when together, we'll once again enter the darkness.